going to make another sliding variable capacitor and see if I can get a useful range of values. I've got some kitchen aluminium foil, two plastic tubings, one is a bit of pipe about 30 millimeters in diameter and the other is a section of broken squid pole and that just slides inside the pipe. If you want more ideas on uses for broken squid poles, well, I've got a separate video on that that I did a few years ago. Anyway, I'll coat the, the outside of this with a foil. I'll just wrap it around the outside and tape it and have two pieces of foil on here. Now, I could have just a single piece of foil that would double the maximum capacitance obtainable, but the problem with that is that you would need a wire going both to the sliding part and the stationary part. Whereas with this arrangement, I'll just have the wires going to the stationary part. So the wires are a bit shorter, there's less stray inductance, except there is the disadvantage of the maximum capacitance being half. Anyway, we'll put it together and see if we can get a useful range from it. Just wrapped the sliding bit in foil and I can confirm that it still slides inside the stationary part. You want the diameters of the two to be fairly close to one another, maybe only four, maybe three millimeters difference, because the closer they are together, the higher maximum capacitance you'll get. But you don't want them to be so close that it's a sticky fit, especially with the foil on. Now you might want to put some tape over the foil if you wanted an even firmer fit. And as far as controlling this, you could glue say a wooden dowel to this so you can just slide it in and out. Now we need to put foil over the still part of the variable capacitor. We need two strips of equal width and they just need to be separated by say five millimeters, not all that critical. So one strip goes there, the other strip goes here. Now people have told me that you can solder to aluminium, but for this exercise I'm not going to. I've just got a bit of wire here that I've stripped a few centimeters from and I'll just have that touching the aluminium. This is the first one. Here is the completed variable capacitor. I probably had too much width on each of the strips. Doesn't matter, it will still work. This will be minimum capacitance around here. And when the plunger is about halfway, where there's maximum overlap of the plates, this will be maximum capacitance. You might want to attach a pointer and scale so you've got a rough idea as to the capacitance. With the inside out, the minimum capacitance is 4.8 picofarad. When it's fully in and the overlap is maximum, the highest is around 30 picofarad. If you're using this for an application like a magnetic loop, you want a degree of stability so that the inside is not rattling inside and causing the capacitance to vary. A capacitor like this would be too small for a crystal set. It could work though for a shortwave crystal set, though the capacitance is still a little bit too small on its own. But if you had it in parallel with a larger fixed value of capacitor, Say you had a bank of capacitors like 22, 47, 68, 100, 120, 150 picofarads, and you had them in parallel with this, you'd be able to get a decent range. And that would also apply for an antenna coupler for QRP. Ideally though, you would want a larger capacitance range for that. Another possibility is a magnetic loop. 
but bear in mind my earlier comments about the inside being stable. You don't want volatile capacitance when you're moving it around because that will very easily detune it. As for other materials, if you've got an old vacuum cleaner, then the plastic hose from that might be suitable. A toilet roll, metal tubing, almost anything that slides inside one another. And if you do use metal tubing, then you'll be able to simplify it because if your tube is the smaller diameter one, then you don't need to coat it in foil. That's already done.